Ministry of Training calls the universities, it's our core business to issue a license to tradesmen. Um, one of the things we look for, it doesn't matter where you achieve your skills, any place in the world you achieve your skills, we take that, we acknowledge those, uh, those uh, letters and we process them for you to have your certificate of qualification. Now, right now, if you are from another country, most of you I see are, we all are, and you need a certificate of, of qualification, it's in your core business to call our office. And I'll give you the hotline number, if you like that. It's 416-326-5656. That's our hotline number. And you can call the hotline, and you can give them a brief synopsis of what trade you are interested in. Now, the trades, we have different skill sets for trades. I was talking to someone earlier, and they were talking about electricians. I mean, electricians, we have three branches of electricians. We have the electrical construction and maintenance license. We have the industrial license, electrical license, and we have the domestic and rural. All of those licenses, you must have your skill sets or your work experience identical to what we seek for that trade. If you are applying for a trade, we send each one of you a package. And in that package has all of the instructions that we look for. You'll have to read over, check to see if your skill sets match the trade that you're applying in, and it gives you the instruction of sending back in to us. Once you come into the office, there will be someone there to assess your skills. And then, if you meet the requirements that you require, then you are given the opportunity to write for trade examination. There are trade examination. Most of the skill, most of our trades, there is a trade examination. And currently, the trade examination, it's four and a half hours in length. If you need accommodation, because some people might not be proficient in English, you are entitled to bring a translator. But we first have to vet that translator. So if you're working, if you want to write an exam as an electrician, your friend or your family or wherever cannot be an electrician. And we check for them. We check to make sure that the person that accompanying you is not an electrician. And if you, if you pass the exam, then you get your certificate of qualification. If you fail, then we give you an alternative on how to achieve your certificate of qualification. We look, the government is moving towards a skilled workforce. Therefore, we are encouraging people not to work on the ground. And if you come in, just to call our office. We have three offices in the Greater Toronto. There's one in Mississauga, one in Toronto, and the other in, in, in Pickering. And those are the offices that you can contact. So once you call our hotline, they will tell you exactly what location best fits you. For most of you here, the location that will best fit you is our Toronto office. And the number for that is 416-326-5800. Again, 416-326-5800. And it's located at 625 Troy Street. I want to bring you up to date also with um, effective April the 8th. There is a change in how we do business. The Ministry of Tra Training College and Universities will continue to be responsible for training. And that's training in the apprenticeship sector. As of April the 8th, there is the Ontario College of Trades. The Ontario College of Trades will be responsible for certification. So if you're coming in to our office and you're requesting certification, you, we will give you a package and then it will go back to the Ontario College of Trades. It takes on a new meaning. Right now, it's that People think that the trades doesn't mean a lot, but you know once you have a skilled occupation, no one can take that skill from you. 
you're a trades person, you're a trades person. I know that many trades that they, they can earn over six to seventy thousand dollars a year. And we really have to keep our mindset and say like without trades, what can we do? Because you need somebody to turn on the light, you need somebody to fix your, your, your plumbing, you need everything. And so trades is very, very important. So with the College of Trades, it's, it, it will be working like the College of Nurses. That's the same type of um, scenario. It will be the College of Trades where you as a person, you'll be within the college. And the trade certification will be given to you by the Ontario College of Trades. There is a cost. The cost is be more than what you pay right now because the examination fee right now is $100. After April the 8th, the examination fee will be $150. And then there is also an annual fee to be part of the College of Trades. So that is the, the scenario that of the College of Trades is a different thing. But going back to trades is that, do not matter where you achieve your work experience, we accept all the work experience, doesn't matter from where you have, is from, as long as it's done in the right manner. Each letter that we accept must be on a company letterhead. And we make, make sure that it's from a company. Right now, we can call anywhere. We can call anywhere. If, if we do not um, acknowledge the document, we can call, call the employer. Asia, anywhere in the world, we call the employer. They're very far because we know that people have come in to write the exam and they come with fake documents. And as from April the 8th, that's, that's a charge. You will be charged for fake documents. Also, examination, we are encouraging people who are writing the examination to come in with a clean slate. Don't bring pieces of paper to cheat because you know what, you will be caught and that's, a, that's also is a cost to the applicant. So there are um, pre-certificate courses. So once your document is assessed, and if you ask for a pre-certificate program, we will give you that information where you can get your pre-certificate um, um, course. I know that most of, from my vision right now, I think most of people here are tradesmen. Um, a little bit about the apprenticeship program, which is part and parcel with the trades, trades piece, because they are two different component to the training. With the apprenticeship, it's mandatory that you must have a job. Apprenticeship is that you must have a job and you must have right now minimum grade 12. So those are the requirements. Apprenticeship is on the job training where you earn while you learn. 90% of your time is spent on the job learning the trade. The other 10% is done in school. The ministry pays 80% of the cost of the in-school training, and the applicant pays 20%. There are a lot of bonuses that goes on with the apprenticeship program. For instance, every apprentice that signs up, they get an application to apply for a loan to help them to buy their tools. It's a loan, it has to be paid back. When you have your certificate of qualification, so we look at your register as an apprentice here, when you're here and you have your certificate of qualification, that's when you pay the loan back. So we give you time, interest-free loan of $300. The, the on-school training, the in-school training, there are some programs where there are three levels of school. What the government does, they've, the provincial government is responsible for the apprenticeship training. And the federal government is responsible for the incentive grant. Maybe you see on TV, there's a commercial saying, you can earn $4,000 in your apprenticeship. $2,000 of that comes from the federal government. Once you finish your Red Seal trades, the level one, you're given, you can apply for a $1,000 incentive grant. That's yours to keep. But mind you, it's tax, you have to pay tax on that. When you pass your level two, you also can apply for a $1,000 incentive grant. And when you finish your, your training, your apprenticeship training, and you pass your exam for a certificate of qualification, you're given a $2,000 bonus. 
So that's where your $4,000 come in. So there's a one-hand apprenticeship program for, for novices or people who don't have enough experience because if you come from your country and you don't have enough experience, you can opt to go to the apprenticeship branch to continue your training as long as you find an employer. But if you're a certificate of qualification applicant, there is no bonus for you. All right, so that's how it works. Um, is, is this plan uh, is, uh, only for the youth people or uh, everybody? Well, at a, we know there is no age for apprentices now. You can be an apprentice as long as you have the willing to learn a new skill and there's an employer to train you. You can learn. There's no age group for, apprenti for apprentices right now. There's no. I mean, you know, you might think there's a little, but there's no age. What is changing? We have a program that's called the Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. And this is for parents in here. But what it is is that your child is in, grade, is in grade 11 or grade 10, and there is a program in school where your child can link up to the program in school. This, the, the apprentice, the, the, the student, will be working towards the secondary school diploma and also working towards the apprenticeship, getting like a knowledge of the apprenticeship. It's like a, a little bit of knowledge about the apprenticeship, but they will be getting credits towards the apprenticeship. So once they finish grade 12 and they choose to go into apprenticeship, the credits that they achieve while in school is credit to the apprenticeship program. So they're doing so you're earning and learning at the same time. Um, you know, the, the thing is that with the um, electrical, there is a wage ratio applied to that, wages, and plus there is a, a, a ratio in terms of qualified people to teach an apprentice. So if an employer wants, if one employer wants to hire one apprentice, that's fine. But if that same employer wants to hire four or five apprentices because they want to pay them lower, it doesn't work. Because of the regulation, it states that these kids can be open to, to um, can hurt themselves, violation of the act. So, as an employer, a small employer, you can only have one apprentice. If you want to hire three or four apprentices, you have to have five or six qualified journeyman people with license. That's in the act. And as March, as of April the 8th, there is a cost, there will be a lot of enforcement out to check in people who are working illegally in the trade, who are working on the ground, who have apprentices without without against the ratio.